All right, just want to go through the parts I'm going to be using on my HK250. Um, this will just give you a basic idea of what you're going to be needing. Uh, first off, radio system. Uh, I'm just going to be using a spare radio system that I had sitting around. It's my old uh, Belt CP 6-channel radio system, uh, 2.4 gigahertz. That's going to work great for this. Uh, go over here to my gyro. This is a Turnigy uh, head-holding gyro. It's pretty much this, this is identical to a Telebead head-holding gyro, just a different label on it. Um, all this stuff, except for the radio system, comes from Hobby City. Uh, if you go to my website, you'll find links for this stuff, uh, the servos. Now, these servos, these are the Turnigy 9-gram servos, but these are the economy ones. They have two different kinds of these. They have a normal version, and they have the economy series. Uh, the price difference is only a dollar. These ones are $1.99. The other ones are $2.99. Now, these ones are said, are listed that they don't survive crashes very well. But for $1.99, I grabbed a bunch of them because uh, I wanted to try them out. And I've used them on one of my other helicopters. They work good. So that's why I'm going to use them on this because I want to keep this helicopter as cheap as I can. Uh, so Now, the motor I'm going to be using... This is a motor that I used on my EP200, my Firefox EP200. Uh, this is the motor on the spare parts page for the Firefox helicopter. And this worked great with the battery that I wanted to use, which is a 7.4 volt, 800 milliamp battery. I wanted to use this battery because it's small, it's light, and it's very cheap. Uh, now, I'm going to be using a 12-tooth pinion with this motor to achieve the head speed that I want. And with these motors, you are going to have to cut the motor shaft down a little bit. And the speed controller I'm going to be using, this is a 18 uh, to 20 amp ESC, the Hobby King Super Simple Series. These are like plug and play. You plug them in and do a couple things and you're good to go. Now you do have to solder connections on this, so be prepared to that. You're going to have to get some um, so again, that's just the basic parts I'm going to be using, and I'm going to show you how to put them on now. Now, because of the motor I'm using, the first step for me is to mount the motor to the motor plate. Then i got to temporarily reinstall the rotor head with the main gear so I can set the uh, gear mesh between the motor pinion and the main gear, tighten up the screws. Then I need to take the rotor head back off and install my servos. Uh, and the reason this is because the mounting holes on this are much smaller than the motor you would normally use for this. So my screws sit underneath the servo, so I can't really get to them um, with the servos installed. So I got to do this first, and it's kind of a roundabout way. And one of the things I got to do is enlarge these uh, holes here on the motor plate. So I took my motor plate out. This is just six screws, and got the screws for my motor these were in the package with the motor pinion now again I'm not using stock pinion I'm using a 12 tooth pinion and this is just a press on fin pinion so what I'm gonna do is position the pinion on the ground and hold the motor right above it and take a hammer and hit the shaft right there the motor shaft and just start tapping it and eventually it'll start sliding right down into this uh, the uh, motor pinion now one of the things I did have to do as I mentioned I, I think I mentioned before you have to cut the main shaft because the shaft is going to come very close to this bottom servo so you got to trim the main shaft or the uh, motor shaft uh, a little bit so that was really easy all I use was a little rotary cutoff tool. Just cut it off. So first thing, and also because I'm enlarging these holes, I'm going to have to use some washers. So these are just extra washers I had around. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get motor pinion on the motor and enlarge these holes and get these fully mounted to the motor plate and go ahead to set the gear mesh. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is going to slip the rotor head assembly down through and put the main gear in place temporarily. Alright, 
now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install this back up in there and my motor's still loose I can move it around on the motor plate and I did use thread locker on these bolts so I'm gonna put this get this mounted back up in place and then adjust my gear mesh down there and then go ahead and then I'm gonna tighten up my motor screws and then I'm gonna go ahead and pop this back off and mount my servos okay so I started mounting my servos and I started mounting my front ones first here and you want to just make sure that the output shafts are forwards there away from the main shaft um, and when you mount them here, the little servo um, nuts here, you got the screws and you got little plastic nuts. Um, and obviously you just put the screw through into the plastic nut, tighten it down. Don't over tighten it because you can strip them out and even crack them. Um, so, and that's a little, it's a 1.5 millimeter Allen screw. So you need an Allen wrench for that. So I'm going to go ahead and mount, put the screws in for this one. Now what I'm going to do is move on to the elevator servo and the same thing applies with the front servos you want to make sure the output shaft is away from where the main shaft is and I'm just going to put mine in from the outside screw it down with the servo screws and be good to go and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here I'm going to mount my radio my receiver rather um, now this this radio system this transmitter receiver this is from my friend Wayne um, so I just want to say thanks again for uh, giving it to me to use for this project. So I'm going to mount my receiver right on the side. I'm just going to tape that down and probably put a little zip tie on it. Um, I'm going to get my speed controller mounted. And I'm, I'm going to mount my speed controller up underneath here like this. And get it zip tied up underneath there. Uh, I'm going to get start getting my server wires wrapped around. Try to get them all zip tied up and buttoned up so they're nice and neat. I don't want anything interfering um, and get my gyro mounted back here and I'm gonna start getting some of that stuff done and I'll come back and review here in a second okay a little update on my progress of the electronics here see here I've got the receiver mounted on the side now it's held on with double-sided tape but I've got an extra zip tie, zip tie here just to be on the safe side make sure that this does not go anywhere um, up underneath here I've got the, the uh, ESC the speed controller and you can see here it's just zip tied in place and the wires come out and around up onto the side here and the motor wires the way I have this set up is I wanted to run my motor wires on the outside and right here there's what this is a piece of split wire loom and I just cut a piece off and then taped it on here so that way these motor wires rub onto this plastic part rather than the metal frame uh, and then I'm just going to zip tie these together when I'm all set after setup uh, you can see here this wire, servo wire, for my aileron servo, I've got it zip tied right here. Just keep it away from this main gear. Uh, and then over here, my pitch servo, you can see I've got one zip tie up underneath there. Keep it away from this main gear. Uh, and everything's coming back towards the back here. See here, and it'll all end up plugged right into the receiver. So I'm just going to keep going, but I just wanted to give you an update as to where I was at. 